Woolworths is undoubtedly an exceptionally competent food and liquor retailer. I mean, their performance over the last decade or so has been phenomenal. The foray into hardware is not turning out to be uh, any sort of testament to their capabilities. Uh, the strategy on paper looks right. It's a $45 billion market, it's highly fragmented. Uh, there's only one dominant big box player and it's Bunnings, which is about 17% of the market. So you'd say, well, there's plenty of room for a really good retailer to carve out some space in, in, in that sector. Um, and that's the approach they took three years ago when they entered, this, in, entered it with Lowe's of the, of, um, the US as a joint venture partner. Um, the reality has turned out to be horrendous. Now, last year they lost the, the Masters chain, lost $156 million, $157 million. They've just disclosed today that instead of doing what they said it would do, which is lose no more than what they lost last year, it's lost $176 million. So the losses are mounting. Um, the more stores they roll out, the worse the, the experience becomes. And so th that's enormously undermining of the credibility of wars beyond those core competencies in food and liquor. And the jury's out as to whether this experiment in hardware will ever actually be profitable. They've now, they had said previously that it would break even by 2016, now abandoned that and said it's going to take longer than that for this network to, um, to, to, to make money, or at least not to stop losing money. Um, they've also slowed the pace of the rollout. You know, they had planned to have 90 stores by the end of 2016. They're now saying they'll open stores at about half the rate they were planning to, so 10 to 15 stores a year. So they're, they're trying desperately to rein it in the, the rate of growth and rein in the rate of growth and losses. So how did a company that's done so much so well, how did they get it so wrong? <laughs> uh, it's surprising, it is surprising, because they spent quite a lot of time looking at the market and, and um, evolving the strategy. Uh, part of it was their joint venture partner Lowe's, Lowe's has a third of the joint venture, well, well at least two thirds, um, is a North American retailer. So last year they fessed up that part of the problem they had was that Lowe's hadn't appreciated the difference between Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere seasons, so they had the wrong stock. Uh, part of it's where they pitched the offer, they tried to differentiate um, their stores from Bunnings, so they went um, up market of Bunnings, um, had it less of a kind of traditional um, hardware offer, um, added white goods and carpets and kitchens and, and all the rest, which is what happens in the States. Uh, as it turns out, tradies and, and hardcore DIY people prefer to go to, into uh, stores which have really dense hardware offers so they can get whatever they want. Um, and Masters has found out that it actually wasn't servicing um, people's requirements. So one of the changes they're going to make is to have more hardware, which seems logical in, for a hardware store. <laughs> so it, just about everything um, that could go wrong has gone wrong. The, the network, because they, they were really ambitious about the, the sort of scale and pace of the rollout, you know, they were planning to get 150 stores up by in, within the first five years. So they least grab land wherever they could, quite opportunistically. Um, which sounds kind of you know, logical, you, if, if there's land available for, for the sort of store you want, you, you'd grab it. Except that what's happened is, of course, you've got st stores in the wrong places in terms of the supply chain. So they've got a very inefficient supply chain. Um, you know, just about everything that you could mess up, they've messed up. Um, whether they can fix it or not, I think is the really interesting question. Um, they've got a new um, MD in the business, um, a guy called Matt Tyson, who's you know, spent a couple of decades in, in home improvement and hardware in the UK and Europe. He was only a point at the start of the year, so one assumes that this, you know, this latest um, rejigging of the strategy flows from his initial assessment of what's wrong with the business and what it'll take to fix it, um, and how long it'll take to, fi to fix. Um, but there's, a, there's so much wrong with what they've got. It will, it is clearly going to be a, you know, not a 12 month fix or a 24 month fix, it's more like a three, five year fix. That's remarkable, and I'm assuming that will bring considerable pressure on them to, to do something because they said last year that they could, you know, that, that it could become profitable soon. It's the size of the numbers which is um, kind of unsettling. You know, they've lost in that business $333 million in two years, um, and clearly they're going to still be losing money in two years' time given that they won't commit to a 2016 break even. Um, if I'm a war shareholder, and, and I'm not, but, but, but there are plenty of war shareholders already anxious about this experiment in hardware. Um, once the losses get beyond half a billion, and they will, by the look of it, um, and they could get significantly north of half a billion, I'd say, please, you know, just stop it. You know, take the, we'll take our medicine, write it off, and go back to it, doing what we, we know we can do. Um, 
so they're going to have to show some progress, and it, they'll have to show some progress over the next 12 months. If they have to put out an announcement like this in 12 months' time, where the losses are even greater than expected, and their strategy has to be refined again, um, that could have um, quite unpleasant consequences for the board management of Woolworths. Is there any indication of what a refined strategy would look like to try and fix this mess? Well, apart from slowing down the rollout, um, they are trying to play with the range, so put more hardware back into the hardware stores. Um, uh, add some more to do it yourself stuff, kitchens and, and bathrooms and stuff. Um, fill in the metro um, parts of the network where uh, they can get um, the scale efficiencies which help the supply chain, which help the metrics over all of the business. Um, they'll s stop opening stores in you know, country and regional parts of Australia, which, as they say, it takes longer than four years to, for them to break even. And they'll start behaving, one would think, more like a rational retailer. Um, and they'll be much more careful about the detail of, of what's offered in the stores, how dense they are. They will, put, they will dense up those stores um, to try and get more. It's, it's, it, one of those stores probably needs about $30 million of, t of turnover to break even. And they'd be lucky to be doing 20 in the established stores. And about a third of the network's been open for um, um, a year and a half plus. Um, and in a, a good retail would normally expect a store to break even in after 18 months, two years. So when you look at it, clearly they've got to do a lot of things to get those stores from a $20 million turnover to a $30 million turnover. <laughs> um, so I, I assume that they'll spend a lot of time on the detail. But it's going to be it's going to be time consuming, uh, which is why they're pushing out the the break even date indefinitely. A challenging time ahead for them. Stephen Bartholomew, thanks very much. Thanks, Eric.